Mother Nature, a forever attentive artist, sits in front of her easel that is the world and prepares her palette for another season. Slowly and ever so subtly, she puts away her Kelly greens and emerald hues and set the world ablaze with her flaming reds and golden shades of autumn. For many living in the American Northeast, the traditional ride through the countryside wouldn't be complete without a stop at a roadside farm to sample the delights of buttermilk donuts and the cool taste of fresh squeezed apple cider. Our travels today have brought us to Old Mystic, Connecticut the site of B.F. Clyde's Cider Mill. Established in 1881, Benjamin Clyde began pressing his apples at local mills and soon rented his own press. In 1897, he purchased the mill and installed the screw press number two from Boomer and Boschard of Syracuse. Boomer and Boschard also supplied the apple grater, apple elevator, and cider pump, as well as the plans for the building. The forging of the industrial age was made possible by harnessing the power of steam. Clyde's Cider Mill represents one of the last steam-powered screw presses still in operation in the Northeast. Transferring the steam power to a series of shafts, flywheels and pulleys that drive the gears and screws interconnected by leather belts greatly improved the productivity of the local mills. Around this time every year, local apple growers begin to bring their harvest here for the making of the local cider. Empire, Rome, Portland, and Granny Smith are just some of the many varieties used at Clyde's. Adjusting the various combinations of these apples gives the cider its unique flavor. The making of cider goes back to the time of the early colonists. In those days, just about everyone made their own cider. It was a very popular drink, and storing away a barrel of cider for the winter was commonplace. Hard cider, a very popular drink up until the time of Prohibition, is an alcoholic version of sweet cider, created by fermenting the cider in oak barrels. The only thing that separates sweet cider from hard cider is time. But people's tastes had begun to change and hard cider soon fell out of favor. The process begins with inspecting the apples. Those unfit for cider are removed as the apples are conveyed to the barn, where they are washed and then elevated to the hammer mill. The hammer mill grinds the apples into a pulp called pumice. 
The operator then pumps the pumice onto the press through a hose. The press is the heart of the operation. The press at BF Clyde was built in Coscob, Connecticut in the early 1900s. The press operator lays a mesh cloth atop an oak rack and pumps pumice onto the cloth. He folds the cloth in, lays another rack on top, and repeats this process six times. Then the racks and the bulging cloth are rolled beneath the screw press. This puts 3,500 pounds of pressure per square inch on the layers of pumice. The juice is forced out of the pumice and through the mesh of the cloth. The juice is then pumped through a hose to a large rotating screen that removes any remaining solids. To avoid potential health risks, the liquid is then sent to be pasteurized, raising the temperature to 165 degrees, thus killing any harmful bacteria. The cool cider is then bottled into jugs. Clyde's Mill is a rare survivor of a once commonplace seasonal rural industry. Until recently, a cider mill could be found in every community where apples were grown. The mill has stayed in the family and is currently owned and operated by Benjamin's grandson, John K. Buckley. The pressing of apples for cider age-old tradition that continues to live on in old mystic Connecticut.